Finally, what everybody's been asking for, we take a look at the Man Cave Dream Machine. Enjoy. Hey, what's up YouTube? Jerry here, back in the Man Cave. Uh, you guys have been asking for a video of me to take out the Man Cave computer and kind of go through it with you and show you what components are in it and uh, kind of how I built it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. But first, I apologize if the audio or video sucks. I'm using a tiny little Canon handheld camera because normally this is what I shoot with. It's a Canon 5D Mark II with a Rode video mic. Um, still haven't figured it out very well for video stuff. But that's normally what I film with, but that's going to be a pain in the ass to maneuver around inside the case and hold a flashlight and all that stuff. So, we're just going to go with the little Canon guy. Alright, let's get started. Alright, getting ready to power down the beast. Um, first thing I'll do before I shut it off is just go around some of the components while it's powered up. So, first of all, a couple of you guys asked why, what this thing is and why, the ones that didn't know asked, why do I have my reservoir on the outside of my case? And if you look down here at the bottom, hopefully you can see I've covered the tubes with split loom going into the case. But the reason I did it was nothing technical. It was just to be creative. I was like, you know, I see all these guys with the awesome water-cooled computers, and they conceal everything inside the case. And I'm like, that's cool. That's the first thing everybody notices when they look at this thing. So I'll bust out. Wow. This is that flashlight from my other review video, so it's a little obnoxious bright. Here, let's see if we can make it a little better. There we go. So you can see I have, I have blue fluid in it right now. Um... It's a special like antifreeze based coolant that I picked up. I'm sure you can do the same thing for next to nothing. And you can see I put in some rubber grommets. I custom drilled out the holes going in. So, and I'm not quite sure how much fluid it holds, but I know it's a little over a liter with all the radiators. And then this guy up here with all the blue lights, these are all individual analog fan controllers. So each one of these lights here represents one fan that's inside the case. Um, it's kind of funny that I built a water-cooled monster and then I put a million fans in it, but I, I was just going for broke. I was like, what the hell? I'm just going to make it crazy. All right, so let's go ahead and come around the side here. You can see I've been adding stickers. Um, pop this thing open. Have a quick look inside while it's powered up. It's a little dirty. I didn't want to go through all the time to clean it up tonight just because I don't have a lot of time. So forgive all the mess, but this is, this is, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, well, what I'm going to do is power this guy down and pull it out in the middle of the room so that we can uh, take all the doors and the top off and go through all the components and talk about what makes up this beast. All right, let's get started on that. Wow, this is the quietest this room's ever been. You turn this beast off, coupled with turning off the air conditioner over there, and it's pretty darn quiet in here. So, let's go ahead and start with this walkthrough. The very first thing I'd like to talk about is the case. I originally decided to go with this case because I wanted, I wanted something that I'd never have to replace. I wanted a case that I would just be able to build everything out of. And after doing a little research online and looking at stuff and wanting to be unique, I found this Case Labs guy who builds these things and uh, sells them. They're kind of expensive. I can't remember the exact price I paid for it, but I think with all the options and everything, it was like six or seven hundred bucks just for the case. But it has quite a few options on it. This is the M10 case, so if you go to the Case Lab site and look up M10, they have an M8 and an M10, and realistically, the only version between the two is inside how the motherboard attaches. One, you can actually put radiators in the top of the case um, because the motherboard clears, but in this one, the motherboard goes up so high. Hopefully, you can see. I'm going to bust out the flashlight here. You can see the motherboard goes almost all the way up to the top right before this top piece here, the extension. And so there's no room for radiators. So get an M8 if you want to put radiators in it and keep it low profile, or you have to buy this extended top piece. Then moving over to the front here, I already talked some about the reservoir earlier. So you already know why I put it on the outside of the case. But let me show you the actual cooling system that's in the top here. If you pull off the extended top, it looks like this. All right, now you can see the business. If you look, this is two black ice radiators. These guys right here. You can go look them up online. They're 360 rad, which means they just hold three 120 millimeter fans. And I got one on each side. Right across here. And as you can see, I have six Ultra Kazi fans on top. Now these are 130 CFM fans. I mean, they really move air, but they're loud as hell. I just don't really care. And if you come down here on the side, of the case. Another reason why I like this case is the doors just pop open. They just swing open. And you can even remove them really easy. You just open them, lift, drop. Hey, no more door. 
and that that works on both sides. So if you come in here, you can see I also mounted three more Ultra Kazi fans on the bottom. So I have a total of 12 fans between the two radiators. I also, down here on the bottom, if we look at the other side, well actually here, let's go ahead and work on this side since I'm already here. I might have to grab the flashlight because this looks pretty dark in here. Yeah, let me do that. I will be right back. Wow, it's a good thing I bought this flashlight from Newegg. <laughs> you can see my review of it in my last video. So, up under here, you can see that I've got the three fans across there. Down here, I have the two Samsung Series 830 SSDs. These things are fantastic. 250 gigs each, and I got two of them in a stack here. Those are RAID 0. And then I have three, or sorry, four 750 gigabyte um, Western Digital Black drives. And those are in RAID 5 for my data. For my power supply, I went with Enermax. I believe it's a 1300 watt Platinum Series. Um, it's modular. Uh, don't ever skimp on the power supply if you build something like this because you want really good clean power and always use a UPS and then we go up here and I got my I think it's O cool who knows here so anyways it's it's a massive pump it was the largest pump that I could find um, I got it from frozen CPU I wish I had a model number for you guys but I uh, unfortunately don't have all that data handy so I'm gonna do the best I can um, this right here is a flow regulator in line comes off of one of the radiators going through the pump and it tells me how uh, how many cubic feet per second of liquid is traveling through the system and then there's a little converter box you can see right here I love how the flashlight just rounds everything out hopefully you guys can see this stuff this little converter box it plugs into converts it to a fan header so that it can report that data to the BIOS and to pre-existing software for the motherboard you can see here in the front I've got three more fans going up or uh, going up the side here and that's really all that's going on in the back of the case. But the thing I love about this case is it keeps everything separate. You see, I got my power supply, I've got my storage, I've got my pump, I've got everything all just concealed nice in the back of this case and I got tons of room. So now let's go around to the other side. All right, here we are over on the other side. Again, the door just pops open, very easy. Lift it off, set it on the ground. You don't necessarily have to. All right, let's see what the business of this is. As you can see, I can only put two fans actually, so I lied earlier, it's not six, I only got five, because I needed to remove one fan to put the DVD drive in. Uh, you can see my huge wire mess here. <laughs> uh, at some point during the build, I just said screw it and threw it together because I wanted to use it. Now my memory here, I got Mushkin memory, it's PC233, eight gigabyte strips, giving me a total of 32 gigs between the eight. And uh, that's part of the reason why I got this motherboard, is I wanted a motherboard that can handle an enormous amount of memory. And this is the Asus Maximus 4 Extreme motherboard. And I opted to go with that one, honestly, because at the time it was like the most expensive. And I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to get the best of the best. I'm sure that's not the case now. Uh, let's see here, what else are we looking for? Here's the new video cards. As you can see, these are the... 680 edition G-Forces. They're actually the four the one plus four gigabyte cards, but for some reason EVGA didn't change the branding on them. And then down here at the bottom, you have three more fans that are pulling air up from underneath the case, which the caster wheels actually give it quite a bit of clearance. So it's sucking all that cool air up and out the top. Here I have coolants uh, VL3N-F10S quick disconnects. And I've got those in the case so that I can quickly disconnect the water block if I want to change the CPU or do anything like that. And the radiators are set up in series. So it, the liquid actually travels through both radiators, then through the water block, then back to the reservoir. Uh, the CPU I have in here is an Intel i7 Sandy Bridge. It's a 3930K overclocked currently to 4.6 gigahertz. I can get it to run stable at 5, but I just I, I don't want to run bleeding edge. So I backed it off to 4.6. Honestly, there wasn't a huge improvement between the two, so I just left it as is. Uh, let's see, what else is really going on here? So we talked about the memory, we talked about the video cards, talked about the CPU, the sound card down here. I have an Asus uh, Zonar, I think it's an STX, and I use optical out to my Z5500 speakers that so many of you have been hating on. I actually like them, I haven't had any problems with them. Uh, but if you know of better speakers, instead of ridiculing the Z5500s, why don't you post what you'd get and I'll look into it. So, let's go ahead and turn the case to the back side here. So, down here, you can see I use 
uh, DVI to HDMI converters just right on the card so that I can run straight up HDMI cables. I also have DVI to HDMI cables, but I just opted to use these because it makes it a lot easier to disconnect it from the computer like I did to roll it out here. And then the STX sound card, you can see it's actually powered and has two standard one, I think they're one fourth jacks, like the professional headphones that you can run off it and have it amplified. I haven't tried that yet. One other cool feature of this case is it's got an extra bay for a second power supply. If you want to run two power supplies, one for your cooling system and one for the rest, I just opted not to do that. It's got lots of little miscellaneous ports and stuff so that you can run hoses in and out of the case. Uh, there's many configurations and options you can get from this case. You only see it as I have it, which is the basic case. I opted for a different mesh on the front in the, in the shroud that covers up the radiators on the top here. So moving around to the front, one other cool feature of this case, and everything pops apart so easy, it's like just phenomenal. So you can go ahead and po pop that off, and you can see the fans right in here. And even this is replaceable, this whole front panel here, you can put in like a USB 3.0 panel, you can put in different audio jacks. It's, it's all 100% configurable. I love you, Case Labs. If you're watching this video, uh, send me something cool. I'll review it. <laughs> okay. So, that pretty much about sums up the man cave computer. I mean, if you want to look at the guts, I mean, there's really, there's really not a whole lot going on here. I mean, you got your cooling system, your two radiators, a uh, buttload of memory, uh, really nice CPU, epic graphics cards. Um, I mean, what more do you need? You can even see the hoses down here. The way I have them routed is they go out through the back and they come up through the backside and then up through this little hole right here down to the CPU up through the radiator and so it keeps it kind of clean I mean I've seen a lot of people spend tons of time making their case look immaculate and I have huge respect for those people but honest I tried and I just I was getting too frustrated and it always gets dirty and dusty so I was like screw it I'm gonna put it together make it work as efficiently as possible and be done with it all right well I hope you guys have enjoyed the video overview of the man cave computer and hopefully it's everything you thought it'd be and more, but more than likely you guys are just going to tear me up on the comments for like not spending the proper time running all my cables all neat. And you'll tell me that like something's wrong with a component that I used in here, or I screwed up, or, or maybe you guys will, will hound me for uh, not wearing anti-static straps while I'm touching stuff. Oh my God, my memory. Oh God, I'm rubbing my foot on the carpet right now. Oh, oh no. Oh, now my CPU memory's gone. I guess I'll have to build a new computer now and do another video. Actually, I'm just totally playing. Hey, if the dude that ripped on me for not wearing the anti-static strap watches this video, I hope you're laughing and not just like pissed and in troll mode. Anyways, let's go ahead and wrap this up. If there's anything else you guys want to see about the innards of the computer, uh, feel free to ask. I wouldn't mind doing a follow-up video, but that's pretty much what it looks like. Give you guys one last walk around now that it's put all back together. There it is, the man cave beast. And it's about roughly the same size as the refrigerator. So if you don't got a lot of room for a case, I don't recommend a case lapse, but if you want something enormous that people would be like, holy shit, that's the one to get. For those of you wondering, this is the rat, rat's nest the cable behind the desk. Again, didn't spend a lot of time on cable management, just drilled some holes up through the desk. I also have the desk bolted to the wall so that it doesn't move at all. I really recommend this. If you have a desk that wobbles at all, go get some of these angle brackets from Home Depot. Just drill it right into a stud. It'll be like the most solid desk you've ever used. And that's the cable nightmare in the back. And I figured since some of you guys asked for it, I'll go ahead and throw this in here too. You can see I just have it plugged into the monitor just through HDMI. But if you notice on this particular monitor, hopefully it focuses, it's a DVI port. So you want to get one that's DVI because then you can disable all the internal monitor junk and get low latency. And let's see if we can get this so you guys can finally believe me. They are 46 inch monitors. Uh, hopefully you can see the information. This flashlight's way too damn bright. Why did I buy this? Oh my god, 160 lumens is shit with camera. Anyways, and there's the clip speakers that I have under the monitors. I don't know if you guys seen those before. But anyways, now I'm getting off topic in this video. So we'll save all this other crap for another video. All right, guys. Well, that about wraps it up. Um, that's the man cave computer in a nutshell, torn down and kind of shown to you. 
Sorry I didn't have the exact model numbers and names for some of the parts. If I find them, I'll go ahead and add them as annotations later to the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if this is the first time you've been to my channel. I really appreciate it. I release videos very frequently. If you haven't joined the Facebook group, do that too. The link's right on my main channel. And hell, if you want to come and pwn me at video games, because you've seen I can't play worth a shit. doesn't matter what I'm playing, racing, simulator, FPS. If you want to really just troll a noob, join me on Steam and uh, we'll play some games. You can also get me on Xbox Live too. My name on there is Barnacles, just like the rest of the services. All right, guys, until next video. See ya.